In today's video, I want to explain how to implement a tree structure uh, and associated operations in assembly language. So first, let's take a look at what a tree is. So this is the correct way of uh, writing it with an I here, yeah, tree. And uh, this is also called a digital tree or prefix tree. And as Wikipedia mentions, uh, it's a type of uh, K-array uh, search tree. So uh, it is primarily used for locating specific keys within a, dot, uh, within a set. And uh, most often, uh, and also in my case, uh, these keys will be strings. I'm interested primarily in uh, associating words with uh, identifiers. So imagine that we're going to build a, a kind of a tree where um, we store uh, words and at the end we get an ID. So uh, this Wikipedia page is uh, quite full of useful information, uh, comparison with binary search tree and so on. Uh, but um, you can see here uh, an image with uh, how things work. So, for example, um, uh, consider the word 10. Uh, we start with a root node that actually doesn't store anything. And for T, the letter T, uh, we move on to a new node. And uh, then for the letter E, uh, which follows the T, uh, we move to another node. And for N, we move to another node and only here uh, when we actually have a word uh, we also have an id so in this case uh, 12 and uh, these intermediary nodes uh, do not actually uh, have a value associated uh, however for example if uh, we would have 10 uh, then we would have here uh, the value 12 for 10 uh, then another node for uh, the following T, another node for the following H, and another ID there. So it's also possible to have uh, intermediary values. So uh, like you see here, where um, we have the word I, which uh, has uh, 11 associated in this picture. Uh, then we have IN, which is here and has another value associated. And then the word uh, in with uh, double n, uh, which is here and has another value associated. So um, regarding the implementation, uh, we need uh, to have uh, for each node uh, some uh, locations in memory where we store the address of the following nodes. And this is possible uh, for uh, each uh, character. So at each node, uh, we have uh, 256 uh, pointers uh, for the following nodes. And as you can imagine, uh, most of these pointers uh, would actually contain null, as uh, we don't have uh, all the combinations as uh, valid words, so not uh, all character combinations uh, produce a valid word. So um, there are some uh, implementation strategies that are also discussed here and one of them is um, to use a smaller alphabet and instead of um, a string of n bytes uh, we can uh, use a twice as long string of uh, four bit uh, units. Uh, also known as uh, nibbles. So uh, then we only need to store uh, 16 pointers per node instead of uh, 256. Uh, but uh, the space requirements in this case uh, go down as reported here by a factor of 8. So uh, this is the approach that I'm going to use. So uh, for each of the nodes uh, here, uh, I'm going to store uh, 16 uh, 
pointers uh, to the uh, next uh, nodes. Uh, also, uh, there is uh, an interesting discussion here. Uh, the tree structure uh, can be used as a replacement for hash tables, and uh, they are uh, faster uh, than a hash table. And uh, there are two reasons for this. In a tree structure, we don't need a uh, hashing function, so uh, we already have a speed up there. Uh, but also, uh, searching for a node uh, is uh, dependent the, only on the size of the key uh, that is being searched. Uh, while in a hash table, considering an imperfect hash function with uh, some colliding keys, uh, then uh, we'll have uh, a complexity that is dependent on the total number of nodes uh, in the table. So this would mean on the vocabulary size which uh, often is uh, quite larger than uh, the size of a key. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to implement this in uh, assembly language and I'm going to discuss how this can be done. And um, we are going to use it for uh, associating uh, IDs to words. So now let's take a look. Uh, first, uh, I have here uh, the memory space allocated for the tree. Uh, this is uh, actually from my test file. I'm going to cover this uh, at the end, but I'm starting here to show you how uh, the tree structure will look in memory. So uh, I have a number of uh, quads uh, here defined. Uh, the first two quads uh, will be used uh, to store uh, first, the last address within the tree structure, and uh, the second quad uh, will be used for the last uh, identifier uh, that was allocated with a node. So then we have some additional memory uh, that is reserved for allocating the nodes. And each node uh, occupies uh, 17 quads, so 17 uh, times 8 bytes. And uh, this is because we want to store 16 uh, memory pointers uh, and uh, one uh, value. By default, this value will be 0. Uh, and uh, when uh, we have an end node, uh, there will be a value associated with it, which will be stored. Uh, also, uh, for the um, uh, memory addresses stored, uh, I'm not actually storing real memory addresses, uh, but I'm storing them uh, relative uh, to the uh, tree. So uh, uh, This is why uh, here I have 16, uh, which is uh, basically the uh, it's covering these two quads. Okay, so the first node uh, will start at 3 uh, plus 16. And uh, then uh, this value here will be updated uh, with uh, uh, plus uh, 17. And the next node will be allocated at 3 plus 16 plus 17, and so on. So uh, now let's take a look at the implementation. Here. Uh, so I'm uh, defining two operations, tree add and tree get. Uh, add uh, obviously will add a new node to the structure, and get will simply retrieve uh, the information associated with the key. Uh, and uh, these are more or less similar, so I'm defining a single. Uh, function here, tree add internal, which uh, has a register R11, uh, which uh, if set to 1 will allow adding a new node, if set to 0 will perform only search, and if the node is not found, uh, it will return a specific value, special value. Uh, other than that, we have uh, the word uh, will be pointed to by RSI. Uh, RDX will be the length of the 
word. RDI will be the tree structure. RBX uh, is the tree size. So this will be the total memory uh, allocated for the tree structure. So we'll do some checking uh, not to uh, access uh, some unallocated memory. And uh, in rocks, uh, we'll return either the ID of the node or minus one if uh, we cannot add a new node. So uh, this ID will start with uh, one and will grow up as uh, we add more nodes. Uh, minus one will be returned uh, either if uh, we don't have enough memory available, so we reach uh, RBX. Uh, or uh, if uh, we specified uh, search only and the node is not available in the tree structure. So let's take a look at the function. I'm starting by saving the registers that are modified and at the end I'm going to restore them. So you can see it at the end here. It's uh, quite a big uh, procedure compared to the previous ones that I've discussed, but it's uh, not that hard. So let's see here. I'm uh, starting by saving the tree start in R10. In uh, R8, I'm reading the last address uh, within the tree structure. In R9, we have the last ID. So now what's happening here, I'm uh, using RDI, which is uh, also set to the tree structure address. Uh, I'm uh, skipping over the first two quads, so I'm getting to the first node. I'm also doubling the length of the word, which was passed in RDX. And I'm doing this because uh, we are accessing four bits at a time, so not uh, an entire uh, byte. And uh, we do a loop here uh, in order to go through each uh, character in the string. So I'm reading the first uh, character, well, the current character in AL. Uh, remember, RSI points. Uh, to the current uh, character, initially the first character from the string. Uh, then I'm checking if uh, dx is uh, uh, an odd or an even number, and based on that I'm performing the nibble selection. So uh, we either select the upper nibble by doing a shift right or ax, uh, or uh, the lower nibble, and uh, in both cases I'm uh, performing an AND with 0F to make sure we select just the nibble. Uh, and in this case, if uh, we finished with the character, I'm also incrementing RSI in order to move to the next character. So uh, now here um, I'm uh, multiplying uh, that uh, particular nibble by 8. Uh, why? Because uh, addresses within the tree structure are stored in quads. If you remember my structure that I showed you earlier, we have only DQ there, so only have quads. Uh, so I'm uh, computing the uh, location uh, for the next node address uh, based on the nibble value. So um, I'm also adding uh, here the current node address. So now in racks I have the actual memory address uh, that relies within the tree structure uh, for the next uh, character, actually for the next nibble. Uh, that I'm currently processing. Uh, and I'm reading uh, this value into racks and I'm comparing with zero. So if uh, this address uh, is not zero, then 
means we have a next node, uh, so we continue this uh, loop. But otherwise, uh, we need to allocate a new node, because uh, it means that the next uh, current uh, nibble is uh, not available. So first we check if uh, R11 is uh, 1, so uh, if uh, it's not, uh, then it means we are performing only a search, so we will not add a new node, so we jump to this uh, error. So we'll declare that we have not found uh, the nibble. So if we allocate a new node, uh, what happens here? Um, we add uh, to the last address uh, 8 times 17 and we compare with RBX. So is it possible to allocate this new node? Remember RBX uh, is the last uh, value that can be allocated in the memory. So if uh, it's not possible if we grow beyond the allocated memory, then uh, we jump again to error and the node will not be allocated. Uh, otherwise, we update uh, the first quad in the uh, tree structure with uh, the new last address. Um, and uh, we also update uh, the pointer to the next node with this uh, address. Uh, and then uh, we move uh, to the next node. So again, if we added a node, we basically move to it. Uh, otherwise, uh, we move to the existing node. So in any case, in rocks, we have the address of the next node, which was either present here or was just uh, allocated here. So uh, we update RDI with the next address. We uh, decrement uh, RDX and uh, we check to see if uh, we still have uh, characters in the string. And remember RDX was initially the string size and this got doubled uh, because we are working on nibbles. So if we still have uh, nibble then uh, we continue the loop. And finally, if uh, we reach here, it means uh, that uh, we had the node allocated, so we read uh, the ID. So um, we are checking if uh, we, we are reading the ID here. We compare if it's uh, zero. If it's zero, it means it was not previously allocated. Uh, so uh, we allocate a new ID and the new ID is allocated here. Uh, we are uh, incrementing the last ID. Uh, we store uh, the last ID first in the tree and uh, we also store it in the current node. And uh, that's it. Uh, the procedure is done. Uh, in case of the error, uh, we store minus one into rocks and uh, we return. Now, maybe you caught a possible uh, error. Um, if uh, we have uh, R11 uh, set to zero, which uh, we indicated as a search only, uh, we uh, will not add a new node, but if we have uh, larger string present in the tree structure. Uh, we are, uh, however, uh, potentially allocating an ID. So it did not require adding a new node, but uh, nevertheless it did not have an ID and uh, we provided an ID for uh, that uh, particular existing node. So I don't know. Obviously if you do not uh, want to allocate an ID, it's possible here to insert a new check uh, to see what value is in the R11 register. And, uh, just keep it and return minus one. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can uh, leave it like this and allocate a new ID.
Okay, so uh, obviously at the end of the function I'm restoring the registers. Now I also created uh, tree add and tree get and the difference is that uh, in for tree add I'm setting R11 to 1, for tree get I'm setting R11 to 0. Uh, and uh, in both cases I'm calling tree add internal, I'm uh, saving R11 and restoring it. So that's it, it's pretty straightforward, uh, even though it was uh, somewhat longer uh, function, this triad internal. So now uh, let's move to the uh, test. So you already saw here the allocated space for the tree. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, we have uh, two sets of words. Uh, this set of words will be added to the tree. Uh, I have here the word length and the word itself. And uh, the, for the second set of words, uh, we'll perform lookups uh, and we have Arctic and northernmost. Uh, these are present in the tree while missing and new are not present in, in the tree structure. So let's see how uh, we do the tests. So um, I'm uh, having here a display loop. I'm uh, moving uh, through the uh, words uh, in uh, the first set of words. This was set here. Uh, and uh, I'm reading first the size uh, and then I'm incrementing pointer. I'm uh, displaying the word and then I'm calling tree add. And uh, luckily uh, these two functions were written so that RSI is the pointer to the word uh, and RDX is the size of the word. So it uh, works. And uh, we also set up here uh, RDI to the tree, uh, RBX to the tree size. Uh, so following this call, uh, remember we have in uh, racks the ID. Uh, so I'm calling uh, win32 to string. I have a video about this function. I'll uh, leave a message. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, so I'm uh, displaying the that uh, ID uh, on the console. And I move into the next word by incrementing RSI with uh, the size of the word. And I'm looping to the display loop. And for the loop to work in RCX, uh, we have the number of words. And then we have a similar loop, but uh, this one uh, goes over the second set of words. And again, uh, we are displaying the word. We are calling tree get instead of tree add. And I'm converting the returned ID uh, to a hex string this time, and I'm displaying it. And that's it. So let's run the program. So as you can see, uh, the words are being added to the tree. Uh, I have for the, uh, the ID 1, Arctic ID 2 is ID 3. Again, the, uh, so add function recognized, it already existed, returned the same ID. Uh, we add the northernmost region on Earth. Uh, then uh, here we have the second set of words. Okay, So we looked up uh, Arctic, we got two. Uh, northernmost, uh, we got four. Uh, then we have the two missing words, which are not available in the tree. So they were not added because uh, we performed a search. So it returns uh, minus one. So that's it for this uh, structure. I hope you found the video interesting. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye.